the dawning of a new faith. Welcome to the dawning of a new faith, a documentary style radio podcast series where we delve into the fascinating stories of the Babi and Baha'i faiths, their roots, and the extraordinary individuals who shaped their destinies. In today's episode, we'll explore the lives of two remarkable men, Sheikh Ahmad and his chosen successor, Seyyid Qasim. In a world steeped in religious traditions and expectations, the teachings of Sheikh Ahmad and Seyyid Qasim were nothing short of revolutionary. They traversed the lands of Persia, Iraq, and Arabia, sharing their profound insights into Islamic prophecies and the coming of the Promised One, or Larim. Sheikh Ahmad was a visionary who saw beyond the established religious norms of his time. He believed that the Rarim would appear in 1260 AH and bring about a transformative revelation that would change the world. In essence, he was preparing the way for the Babi and Baha'i faiths. The torch was passed from Sheikh Ahmad to his devoted disciple, Seyyid Qasim. Despite facing opposition and criticism, Seyyid Qasim tirelessly propagated the teachings of his spiritual mentor, all while preparing his disciples for the imminent arrival of the twin messengers of God. Seyyid Qasim's life was mocked by sacrifice, selflessness, and an unwavering commitment to spiritual truth. He warned his followers to remain vigilant and discerning. The death of Seyyid Qasim was the signal for renewed activity on the part of his enemies. A thirst for leadership, and emboldened by his removal and the consequent dismay of his followers, they reasserted their claims and prepared to realize their ambitions. For a time, fear and anxiety filled the hearts of Seyyid Qasim's faithful disciples, but with the return of Mullah Hussein Ibusfari, from the highly successful mission with which he had been entrusted by his teacher, their gloom was dispelled. It was on the first day of Muharram, in the year 1260 AH, that Mullah Hussein came back to Karabila. He cheered and strengthened the disconsolate disciples of his beloved chief, reminded them of his unfailing promise, and pleaded for unrelaxing vigilance and unremitting effort in their search for the concealed beloved. Living in the close neighborhood of the house the Seyyid had occupied, he, for three days, was engaged continually in receiving visits from a considerable number of mourners who hastened to convey to him as the leading representative of the Sayyid's disciples, the expression of their distress and sorrow. He afterwards summoned a group of his most distinguished and trusted fellow disciples and enquired about the expressed wishes and the last exhortations of their departed leader. They told him that, repeatedly and emphatically, Seaweed Qasim had bidden them quit their homes, scatter far and wide, purge their hearts from every idle desire, 
and dedicate themselves to the quest of him to whose advent he had so often alluded. He told us, they said, that the object of our quest was now revealed. The veils that intervened between you and him are such as only you can remove by your devoted search. Nothing short of prayerful endeavor, of purity of motive, of singleness of mind, will enable you to tear them asunder. Has not God revealed in his book, Whoso maketh efforts for us, in our ways will we guide theme. Why, then, Mullah Hussain observed, have you chosen to tarry in Karbila? Why is it that you have not dispersed and arisen to carry out his earnest plea? We acknowledge our failure, was their reply. To your greatness we all bear witness. Such is our confidence in you, that if you claim to be the promised one, we shall all readily and unquestionably submit. We herein pledge our loyalty and obedience to whatever you bid us perform. God forbid! exclaimed Mala Hussain. Far be it from his glory that I, who am but dust, should be compared to him who is the Lord of Lords. Had you been conversant with the tone and language of Seed Kazim, you never would have uttered such words. Your first obligation, as well as mine, is to arise and carry out, both in the spirit and in the letter, the dying message of our beloved chief. He arose instantly from his seat and went directly to Mirza Hazen, Mirza Mulit, and other well-known figures among the disciples of Seyyid Kazim. To each and all he fearlessly delivered the parting message of his chief, emphasized the pressing character of their duty, and urged them to arise and fulfill it. To his plea they returned evasive and unworthy answers. Our enemies, one of them remarked, are many and powerful, we must remain in this city and guard the vacant seat of our departed chief. Another observed it is incumbent upon me to stay and care for the children whom the Seyyid has left behind. Mullah Hussain immediately recognized the futility of his efforts. Realizing the degree of their folly, their blindness and ingratitude, he spoke to them no more. He retired leaving them to their idle pursuits. <laughs>